All right, everybody, for those of you who don't know, my name is Michael Forrest, and welcome to It's Quest Time. Now, before we get going, I'm going to ask all of you uh, if you can stay off of this uh, stage area here. This way, i got a little bit of room to move around and do the whole hosting thing, and it also helps, uh, you know, uh, keep this display nice and clear, right? Uh, now, also, uh, if I could direct your attention to your menu in your lower left, you're going to notice that you have a microphone icon at the very top of that. When that microphone icon is clear, that means we can hear what's happening around you. I see it's already been turned to red. Thanks for doing that, guys. Um, and uh, when it's red like that, that means you're muted, and that means we can't hear what's happening in your environment. So if somebody comes into your space and says, hey, are you still on that thing? Feel free to answer them because we're not going to hear any of that. Or maybe you have a dog barking in the background, right? Uh, you won't face social ruin back at the campfire by becoming known as the avatar that started barking during its quest time. Uh, just because you're muted, guys, doesn't mean you can't express yourself. You're going to notice that you have an emoji uh, icon on your menu wheel. It's a little pink cheek smiley face. And when you click on that, your emoji panel opens up in front of you. And you're going to notice, like, uh, like, say I say something deep and meaningful up here, right? And it touches you and it starts to build up. You can just let it out and just let it flow. Just let it go on up like that, right? Maybe I got some backup dancers backstage, right? And maybe they come out breaking its quest time the musical. And you're all impressed, right? So they can throw up the applause that I live for. And I can take the moment to drink that all in because it feels good, right? Uh, now, maybe, just maybe, you know, I say something like, I'll ask you guys a question. You can say yes by smiling like this. You can say no by frowning like this. Maybe I say something funny, but no one to do that every now, every now and then. Uh, you can throw up a silly face here to show me that you're laughing. And then there's this. This is not how we ask a question, right? This is how you get my attention if something's gone wrong. Like maybe I'm waving my hands around like this, right? And it looks like I'm talking, but no sound's coming out. And you're like, what's going on? I can't hear the guy. He looks like he's talking, but he's not, right? Um, well, that's how you get my attention. Or maybe just maybe the uh, display behind me burst in the flames. Don't laugh. That actually happened one time. My moderator's from Good Sense of Humor. And I used to give them Terraformer for special effects. And since they tried to burn down my set, I don't do that anymore. Lesson learned, right? Um, now, what you can also do is uh, you can keep this emoji panel open for events like this because, like, it's a good way to give me feedback. But more importantly, it lets people around you know what's happening. Like, uh, let's say that um, the person next to you starts going like this. That means they thought something was funny, and you may not agree. You might be like, that wasn't funny at all. I'm going to go stand over here. And you can do that. This is VR. All right. Now, uh, Quest Time is an event for Oculus Quest users, but all are welcome. So if you're on the device, feel free to hang out because you may pick up something that uh, helps our ever-growing Quest community. There's a lot of uh, new Quest users coming in all space, and that's great. But let me uh, get some idea of how to proceed here. If you get those emoji panels open, this will help. Uh, how many of you are actually on a Quest right now? Let me see some smiles or some hearts or something like that. Raise your hands up, you know, dance around. If you're on a Quest, let me see some motion. All right, cool. Oh, awesome. It's a lot. Uh, how many of you are new Quest users? Like you're not used to moving around, you're just you're starting out, you know, any new Quest users? Okay, how many of you are new to all space and how the Quest performs in all space? And a new uh, Alt users? Okay, a few of you. All right, that's cool. All right, gives me some idea how to get going. Now, when I first got my quest, right, I started out with an Oculus Go, right, uh, and I'd been in Alt Space for about 10 months. Uh, and what happened was, uh, you know, I was really looking forward to getting that second hand, right? Because on an Oculus Go, you only got the one controller, and I had that one hand, right? So I was really looking forward to the second hand because, see, I grew up in Brooklyn, so I'm used to talking with my hands a lot, right? And, uh, but, you know, on the go, I felt like I wasn't expressing myself as fully as I could because all anybody saw was my hand going like this, right? So I was really looking forward to being able to do this, right? And, uh, you know, turns out, though, when my quest arrived, I was confronted, right, with all of these buttons, right? And it's a lot to take in in the beginning, right? You know, they all do different things. And uh, what I like to do is I like to make sure everyone's got a handle on these controls. Because, so, listen, if you're here today, right, you... Uh, you know, you've got a basic handle on, like, the left thumbstick moves you around, the right uh, thumbstick turns in these circles, and if you combine them, you get these big, elaborate circles that make my presentation so much more dramatic, right? Uh, if you could, like, everybody just, like, go like this in the big circles, because when I look out there and everybody's doing that, it looks like ballroom dancing, and since I don't have a big audience, I'm going to come off the stage, do it right now. Everybody give me some big circles like this, right? I want to see what that looks like, because it always looks really cool. As a matter of fact, I always say I wish you guys could see what I'm seeing when you guys are doing it. Wow, that looks amazing. Uh, and it turns out now you can, because about a month ago, we got a YouTube channel. And uh, so if you want, you can uh, turn around and you see Raven Eye up there, just waves at the camera and be like, hey, YouTube, how's it going? I'm Michael Forrest. And in here today, we got Braden R. It's another Braden. We got two Bradens today. We got two Bradens in here. Uh, we also got J Corp 2011. We got OPS Master 56. We got uh, George. We got 
a dangerous saurus living a dangerous life. We've got Hummingbird and we got Dan and Lauren helping us out today. Thank you, Dan. All right, really appreciate it. Nice body language. Got that going on, Dan. Very cool. All right. Speaking of, let's uh, let's jump into uh, how some of these buttons work here. Uh, and if you're already familiar with the controls, don't worry. We're going to do some movement exercise, exercises like we just did. This way it makes it fun for everybody while everybody skills up, right? Now, on your right controller, you have this grip button. And on your left controller, you have this grip button. And both of these buttons are going to allow you to interact with your environment, right? Like, for example, you'll be able to grab fireworks. You'll be able to grab sparklers, things like that. And if you're in a world beta program, you're going to use this to edit worlds. But when you're holding objects with the world editor, when you're holding those objects like that, it's going to change the behavior of your right thumbstick. No longer will this thumbstick uh, turn you in circles while you're holding an object while you're editing a world. Uh, what will happen is if you move the thumbstick from left to right, what's going to happen is that the scale or the size of the object is going to change. If you move that stick forward and backwards, it's going to push the object away or it's going to pull it closer to you, right? Um, now, also, speaking of thumbsticks, you have this left thumbstick here. And this, what this does, if somebody's willing to change their vertical height for me, uh, if somebody's willing to lift up, looks like uh, you're doing it a little bit, Opus. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, OPS Master. I don't know why I said Opus. I could just OPS through me. Uh, if you're willing to like stand up a little bit or sit down, change your vertical height, and show everybody what happens when you push down on your left thumbstick. You want to do that? There you go. Boom. Just like that. You see, so if in all space, if you notice that your, uh, your vertical height changes, like you feel too tall or maybe you feel too short, what you can do is press down on that left thumbstick and it's going to recenter you, right? And it's going to make you feel more comfortable. All right, now uh, another button that we've got to deal with here is, uh, now while these are a lot of buttons, some of these buttons do the same thing, right? What you've got is this uh, right right select button, you've got your right trigger, and you've got, if you've got your left pointer enabled or your main menu, you've got this left select button here. What these do, if you hold these down and you move your hand through the crowd, right, you're going to notice name tags appearing above everybody's head, and that's how I know everybody's name so quickly, except when I screw it up like I did OPS Master 56 there. Or we got Braden R, we've got Beat You Up, all right? That sounds warm. That sounds really warm, man. I am tired of winter, all right? Take me to the beach. Take me. All right, so anyway, uh, let's see what else we got thrown off there thinking about the warmer weather, and I left my pointer up here. Oh, no, doom. Uh, on your left controller, you're going to have this flat button here, and this is cool because you know that big blue uh, and white triangle button in your lower left? Everyone's always telling you to open that main menu, right? But when you have a room scale experience and you walk out past your menus, right, it's always the time in all space when somebody says, you know, open your main menu, or you're looking around, and you're like, oh, where is this thing? I'm always losing it. And it's always behind you, right? You turn around, you're like, oh, man, I'm getting so sick of this. But you got to remember, on an Oculus Quest, all you have, your, your menu is in your hand at all times, handy information. If you press that flat button on your left controller toward the bottom there, it's going to open your main menu, right? I haven't touched my blue and white triangle button in months. All I do is I flick my hand out like that, and I push the button, my menu's open. Flick my hand out like that, flick the button, and my menu is, my menu is closed. You don't have to do the whole hand flick thing. I just think it looks cool. Menu open, menu closed, just like that. All right. Now, uh, what else you can do here is you have the, uh, oh, yeah, this is a cool button right here. This is the left trigger button. What this is going to do is it's going to make you accelerate. So if you're just walking along or flying, what you can do is press down on that left trigger button. It's going to cause you to speed up. And then you can go like, you know, we can run out here, do these giant circles, right? Make a whirlpool. Like, we don't got a lot of people here, so we're going to have to move. Like, we have to make a whirlpool going. Let's go and spin around here. Let me see it. If you get dizzy, don't do this. If you get dizzy, just stop. But I want to see the whirlpool. Let me see how you guys are organized today. Let's see. All right, small group are probably one of the most organized we've had. All right, that is a great formation. Look at that. Oh, that's the avatars. Good work. That's amazing. All right, cool. Excellent. Well done. All right, uh, all right so that's, uh, that's the accelerate button there. And uh, let's see what else we have here. We have, uh, let's see, you have, oh, yeah, this is an important one. On both of your controllers, you have this teleport button here, and you have another one right here. They both work. And I'm hoping you're in a line dash teleport because it's a great transition. It feels like you're flinging yourself across the room. And if everybody joins me up against this wall here, right, what you can do is if you aim down at the ground and you hold down one of these teleport buttons, let's start out with the right controller. You're going to see a blue circle appear on the floor, right? And you can aim that across the room by that wall. And as soon as you let go, boom, you get thrown right across the room just like that, right? And now uh, if you press it on your left controller, the left teleport button, and you aim across the room again, right, you can fling yourself right back to the other side. Boom, just like that. It's a great way to get around in all space. Actually, if you hold down both of these buttons at one time, right, and make an X with it, as soon as you let go, boom, boom. You do a little zigzag kind of a motion, just like that. It's really neat. Uh, you could also do the all space moonwalk, all right? The way you do this is let's you walk up to the stage here and you start going backwards. If you want to get fancy, you can squeeze your left accelerator button, but you can keep teleporting back to the same point, 
just like this, and you're doing the all space moonwalk. It's pretty cool. And then hop right on the stage just like that. And you get uh, comfortable with this movement after a while. Like one of the time when I first started messing around with this stuff, I was at the Universe, and back then it was held in this really large world. So when the event was over, I went to explore it. I walked up to the edge, right? And what happened was I started to fall, right? And I'm like, oh no, I'm falling, right? And I turn around and I notice that there's a cliff, right? As I'm falling and in midair, while I'm falling at great speed, just before my avatar respawned, I reached out, I pressed the button on my controller, and boom, I was thrown onto the cliff, just like that. And I knew in that moment that I was getting used to the controls finally. It can take a few days to about a week or so to get used to it, but there's gonna come a time where even though you still feel the plastic in your hands, you're gonna uh, you know, basically feel like these are actually your hands. You won't think about what buttons you're pressing, just like if I say, hey guys, look out that window there, right? Which I'm gonna do at the end of the show when I press that big red button, like everybody, look at this big red button, right? The way I'm pointing like this, I'm not thinking about how to do it. I just do it. And you'll get to that point too, using these gestures. And the way you do this, if you hold down your third finger, your middle finger there, right, you'll notice that you're pointing, right? If you do it on the other controller, right, now you're pointing there. Now I'm touching my fingers together, kind of twiddling my fingers because like, you know, I don't know if it's, it's going to work here. All right, let's see, go like that. And, then, and if you see somebody doing something you like in all space with these gestures, like if you squeeze your trigger fingers, right, now you got two thumbs up, right? Maybe I'm not doing a great job today. Give me two thumbs down. Maybe you don't know yet. Maybe you're going to like, give me both of them. Uh, during one of the first quest times, we saw somebody doing this, right? That's pretty cool. Uh, if you touch your buttons or your thumbsticks without pressing down, your thumbs will go down and kind of combine this into a cool dance move, right? Like that, show me your moves, go like that, right? You know, or maybe, you know, you can just rage out and be like, no, right? Do all that kind of thing, right? And uh, basically, uh, during one of the first quest times, somebody came up the stage and they did this, right? Like a bird, that's pretty cool. Um, so basically, if somebody does something that you like, copy them, mirror their movements. It's the best way to pick this stuff up. All right, and uh, all right, let's see, I left my, left my pointer on the other side, that's unusual. All right, now there's another button you need to be aware of, and don't push this now, because if you do, I'm gonna feel it. I'm gonna feel it down deep, right? Uh, that's the flat button on your right controller. Now, this is how I leave all space. It's like kind of an eject button, right? Like if somebody comes in and says, hey, dinner's ready, right? I go, okay, guys, gotta go. Press the flat button, and I just press quit, and as soon as I get a chance, if you're dancing around the universe and you you know press that button by accident, you'll see a resume option and it'll bring you right back into all space. It's a great option in case you know you press that button on accident. But it's also pretty good to know in case things go wrong, right? Like maybe you're turning your head, right? And the whole world moves with you. This can make you feel dizzy. This can make you feel kind of sick, right? So you're going to want to be able to leave all space in a hurry. That's the best way out. Is press that eject button and you'll be out of there. Now there are sometimes there's going to be times where this doesn't work. Or you're going to see black, uh, you know, all on the, around the edges of your screen, and you look over, and there's a black void out there, and you're like, oh, no, something is horribly wrong. And you look straight ahead, and you see all your friends are frozen like this, right? You know, something's gone, and something's happening, right? So what you're going to want to do in this case is you're going to want to, you know, restart your headset. And the best way to do this is, listen, a lot of people will restart their headset by taking the device off, and if your device isn't in the charge cycle, it won't light up to indicate that it's charging. And uh, if you're like me, you might think your device is broken. And ever since then, I learned how to do this. The way I do it myself is while I'm still wearing the headset, I keep it on, right? To restart my device, I make sure I'm wearing it. And what I do is I hold my index finger up against the side. I feel for that button right there, raise that button. And then I take my other finger and I press, I squeeze them together on the sides of my device and it squeezes the button in, right? And when it happens, after about four seconds, the device is gonna, you know, turn off. In all space, it's gonna look like I'm concentrating, right? Where I'm deep in concentration there concentrating so hard that my avatar disappears and I get plunged into the darkness. And after about 10 seconds or so, I start thinking, why did Oculus make it take so long? I don't get it. It doesn't need to be this long. And after about 15 seconds or so, I start thinking about friends I haven't seen in years. I wonder how they're doing. 20 seconds go by. I start thinking about that dog I used to have when I was little. That was a good dog, right? And then, you know, uh, you know, I start thinking about life and the big questions. And out of the darkness emerges the Oculus logo and it starts pulsing. And when it starts pulsing, I move my hands away, just like that, right? And then the device will start as normal, right? And then I can just hop right back into all space, be like, I never left. It only takes, you know, a minute or so to do it. It does take a while, but it's the best thing to do if the device freezes. There is another option you should be aware of, and that is a factor of reset. But you only use this in an extreme emergency. Like I came out of all space one time, and when I came out, I saw this notice on my, on my screen that said, Oculus Home is closing. And there was a blue button to press OK. So I said, OK, I don't know what that is, but OK. Right? And then all of a sudden the screen just said loading. And I'm like, well, that's weird. I waited around for like two minutes, right? And you know, it still said loading. So I restarted my device like I should just showed you guys. And then when I came back in, it still said loading. So I knew something had gone horribly wrong, right? And what I did was I asked my good friend Google about it. You know, by the way, he asked for you, you know, knows all the things, right? And uh, you know, I described my problem and Google says a lot of people are having this issue, right? And the best thing you can do is a factory reset, right? 
So I did the factory reset and be warned, if you need to do this, you're gonna lose everything. Like if you have any photos on your device, you're gonna lose that. You're gonna lose all your settings. You might even lose your Beat Saber scores. It's very serious, right? You'll have to re-download your apps. The good news is you won't have to pay for them again, right? And this is basically like getting your quest when you first got it. And it's important people know that they have that option if something goes you know, horribly wrong. Uh, so that's a good thing. Now, if you have your quest, you are familiar already if you're here today with your guardian system, right? Now, using your Guardian system, uh, you know, you did the tour, you danced with the robot, you played with the blimp, you did all that fun stuff. But if you're here today, you may not know how to use your Guardian system to your advantage in all space. I mentioned earlier about getting dizzy. Now, one trick, that regardless of what device you're on, if you get dizzy in VR, one thing you can do is just look at your hand. Right? Hold it up to your face just like that. You know, check it out. It's a nice hand. Kind of looks like French fries. I have no fingernails, right? And then as I'm looking at the hand, right? The dizziness will start to pass. And when it does, I slowly take my hand away and I take in my environment again. That can help a lot, but you can actually help you use your guardian system to help with this, right? And the way you do it is like, let's say, you know, you're having a room scale experience, right? Uh, and I like to say, you know, you'll notice it in all space sometimes somebody will be walking along like they're having a good day and all of a sudden they go like that, boom, and it's because they hit a wall, right? You don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you're, you're, uh, you take care of yourself and you protect the device too. You don't want to cause it any damage. Right? So what you want to do is if you move around your play space, lead with your hands, right? Because that's going to feel the guardian first. And when you get close to it, you're going to see that grid appear. And when you see that grid, you can still touch your thumbsticks, right? So you can move around. Like right now, I could be standing up, you know, to my real world wall, but I'm still able to move around like this, right? And what I can do is I can guide my avatar over, right, to this display here, right? And I got, you know, and now what I can do is walk around my play space now, right? And as I'm walking around, right? You know, I'm, I'm looking back at that display, which is my real world wall, and oh no, the worst happens. I've fallen off the stage, right? And I'm in the audience now, and maybe the audience wants to mess with me, try to make me dizzy. Everybody come at me and try to make me dizzy. Anybody? Any takers today? Come make me dizzy, right? Now, if I'm looking ahead and you guys are like putting your hands in my face and messing with me, it's the first time nobody tried this. What a respectful audience. Usually people are putting their hands in my face at this point, right? Uh, yeah, go ahead, mess with me. Mess with me hard. There we go. All right. So, all right. Not really enthusiastic today. I'm not really feeling it. All right, this is probably the easiest time I've done this. There have been a couple of times where people have gotten close. Oh, that's good, Humminbird. Very nice. But no matter what you guys do, I can still see that display, and I know that's my real-world wall, right? So I'm not going to get dizzy because I have something to lock onto. This is like, I call this anchoring. What you can, another thing you can do, right, is like maybe say you've got a table, and you want to, like, line up a table, your desk, with the edge of this stage here, right? And basically, this connects you to the real world. It gives you a frame of reference as you move around in VR, and that can help with the dizziness a lot. Well, usually people are, like, a lot more willing to, like, gang up on me. I must... I must be doing something right. The audience didn't attack me today. That's, that's nice. You guys are really nice. Thank you. That's the first time that ever happened. Okay, weird. All right, uh, now, another cool thing you can do, right, is you can, uh, sit, you can switch from a room scale experience to a stationary experience pretty effortlessly. And the way that you do this is, like, let's say that, you know, I've been up here all day and I'm tired, right? I've been hosting all day every day, and I'm just, I'm just exhausted, right? So what I do... Right, as I walk up to the edge of my guardian, right, I see where the pass, you know, pass through is not the grid. I make sure I got enough room for my head to go through, so I stick my hands through the guardian, right, and then I stick my head through it. When I do, my pass through camera goes off. I can see the real world, right, and uh, you know, I got my coffee here. You know, take a sip of that. That's good stuff. And I see I've got it in my chair right over there. So all I have to do is walk out into the real world. Now I'm seeing with my pass through camera. I can't see any of you guys. And I walk over to my chair, right, and I sit down in my chair, you know, and then I press the blue button, saying I want to have a station experience. And when I come, like when I when I press that button, I come right back into VR, and it turns out I never left all space. You don't have to leave all space to do that. Another thing you can do is just works in the other direction. I was moderating an event one time, right, and uh, I felt like standing up and walking around. It's a pretty big deal for me. So you know, I got up and I just thought I was going to walk into my guardian. But sometimes your quest can lose your guardian, and you have to repaint it. Normally, not a big deal, but uh, in my case, I was moderating for an admin, right, and it was very. Oh no, I've got to get back in. So I'm drawing the boundary out as fast as I can, right, and I'm thinking, you know, why is my place? Is so big, Warren. Dan, why is it so big? It's such a large area. I don't know. So I'm, you know, drawing, you're drawing this out here. I'm starting to panic because, you know, I may not be able to get into the event and the host is going to be upset and I don't know what to do. And as soon as I close the loop, the grid pops up on the ground, right? And I find I'm still in all space. I never left. All anybody sees in all space is your avatar frozen like this. Right? I was paused there. Maybe a little dramatic pause. It's funny. One time when I paused, uh, you know, what happened was, um, you know, my system actually crashed. Right? And everybody's standing there, like, watching me, and I'm like, my avatar's like, right? And, you know, and I go, and, you know, and they're all in the audience going, look how, look how devoted he is. He's so invested in the role. He's got such range. My goodness. He's very committed, you know? But it actually, I had crashed. It was funny. I ended up coming back in, and, you know, it was like, you know, I, I came in behind everybody, and everybody's staring at the page, like, what's going on? You know? Um, but, yeah, so that was pretty funny. 
but that can happen. Um, and uh, so yeah, you can uh, so you can switch back and forth, uh, and all anybody sees is your avatar frozen, and uh, you can switch between the experiences pretty effortlessly without ever leaving all space. Where are we going? The club stage, really? What's going on there? Okay. So we're generally considered rude to be open a portal in uh, or events like that. But you know, uh, if you're new to all space, you know only a better way to get around. Sometimes that's a good thing to do, but it can be disruptive. So try to avoid that if you can. All right. Let's see. Now uh, there's some, now the great thing about the quest is it just works, right? But there are some accessories that you can get that can make the quest work even better. You know, like those earbuds that they have, I had to wait a month for mine. And in that time, I got used to what a great sound experience it is on the Quest. There's no feedback. It's a really great, rich, full sound. So when I got my earbuds, I really wasn't expecting much, right? I thought I'd be able to use my Quest without disturbing people around me. I thought that would be a way to go. Uh, and they hang down your, uh, from your device from the sides like earrings. I don't know what I look like, you know, in VR, but I like to think when I got these on, I, you know, I, I like to think I look fancy, right? And I went in the campfire to test them out. And you guys know there's a breeze in the campfire? Nobody told me this. I went over to that fence area there, you know, that little fence rail down by the water, and I'm listening, and I heard the water rushing. I've never heard that before. It turns out there's a lot of ambient sound in all space that makes the experience a lot more immersive, right? It make you feel a lot more fully present. It's definitely worth checking that out. All right, you also have these, uh, these uh, face inserts that you can get. Uh, now, a lot of people say that the Quest is uncomfortable, right? That's not true. An Oculus does not uh, promote this enough. What they uh, do, that there's a breaking in period, right? It turns out that the oils in your face will actually make the face insert that comes with the Quest a lot uh, softer, right? So in the beginning, if it's very uncomfortable, like when I first started using it, I got a sore on my forehead because of it, right? Uh, and, you know, uh, you know, I've known people who have actually returned the Quest because of this, but if actually uh, after a few days to a week or so, uh, you know, it'll start to break in, right? Now, a lot of people get tempted to modify their device, try different straps, try like an external battery pack or a counterbalance weight, and those things are great. Uh, but if you do it too early before your device is broken in, what will happen is you'll adjust it and you'll be like, yeah, I got the balance just right. It's awesome. And then about a week later, you're like, man, it's starting to get uncomfortable again. It seems like the balance has shifted. And that's because of this breaking in period. So if, you, if your Quest is new and you just got it, right, give it about a week or so uh, before you start thinking about modifying it. Because there, believe me, there's going to come a point where you don't feel it on your face at all. Like these are just your eyes in the same way that these are just your hands. And you'll just be here with all of us. It won't be distracting. And in the beginning, if it's uncomfortable, just come out of here. Take a break. You know, uh, that can help. Don't be like me because I ended up pushing it too far and I got that sore in the forehead. And those of you who have been here before heard heard the story about how I walked around saying I bled for all space because the thing opened up. It's kind of a gross story. People don't like it. So, you know, I got to change it up a little bit. All right. Now, uh, you want to protect your device by getting, you can get, if you wear eyeglasses, you can get these prescription lenses that are protect your, uh, protect your headset. And so will this travel case here. You can keep your, your stuff in it. Uh, you want to protect your device because, listen, if something happens to it, it's not like losing a toaster. All right. I've seen people where they've lost their headsets in, uh, in all space. And after they've made friends in here, they made some connections, uh, you'll experience the loss of your headset like an actual deep loss. And it's, it's not good. It never feels right. All right. Now, we are going to be uh, taking questions. So if you, uh, we are going to be opening up the question panel here. Let's get that going. Uh, and if you want to ask a question, you're going to see a right, raise hand button appear as if by magic on your lower right. Now, uh, if you press that raise hand button, you'll get on my list. You can ask a question, make a comment, maybe tell us about an accessory that you've used. And while I'm waiting for that list to fill up, if you want to follow us, you can at uh, underscore, underscore Uncanny Valley on Twitter. And listen, those products I just mentioned, if you want to try any of them at all, right, uh, if you go to allvr.com, you're going to see up in the upper left there, it says channels, uh, and you'll see a list of all the All Space event channels. You'll see Raven Hall events toward the very bottom of the list, all right? And if you press on that, you can take it to our event channel. There's a join Discord button where you can, uh, you know, hang out with us, help us put on events like this if you like. And there's also, um, you know, the most important is all the... Uh, the, all the products listed on the left side that I just mentioned. So if you want to try any of those, the links are right there. And uh, also, there's the most important button on the internet, subscribe button. Right? And if you press that, it lets all space know that you enjoy our content. And plus, we don't get paid to do this, so it makes us feel good whenever that number goes up. All right, let's see. We have anybody on the list here? We're taking your questions here. We got Boother. Boother, what's up? You got a question, comment, or anything like that? Uh, yeah, You're on the air. Yeah, just because you what's were up, talking Boother? about accessories and stuff, and there's one thing yeah. that I do with my quest that I realized a lot of people don't know is possible. So uh, what's that? if you uh, have an Oculus Quest and you also happen to have a PC that has an AMD graphics card, the, the yes. feature right in the graphics card's driver that lets you wirelessly stream all the PC VR content to the quest and that enables you to wirelessly use PC VR, which works a lot better than all the other stuff like uh, oh wait a minute you know, wait a minute like wait a minute wait, minute, wait a minute wait wait just a minute are you telling me you got it to work wirelessly without the Oculus Link cable? Yeah, come here. Yes. I want you on camera. Get up on front of the stage. Explain to everybody how to do this. This is awesome. 
without yes. an Oculus Link, you actually streamed it, you, you connected it wirelessly. Exactly, yeah. Like, there, there are, uh, actually, there are several solutions that do this, but they all were, I, I don't know, they had, like, latency, and it really wasn't really enjoyable. So, uh, what I uh, uh, did, I got an AMD graphics card. And yes. in the radon driver, like right in the driver of the graphics card itself, there's a tab that is called VR streaming, okay? And you enable that, and then there's a little application that you have to install on the Quest, and then it connects wirelessly to the PC. Actually, I'm using it right now. Like, I'm That's not using awesome. all space on the Quest. This is all space on the PC because on the Quest, sometimes I had issues when there were, like, videos shown on the monitor and stuff. Sometimes it worked, yeah. sometimes it didn't. And on PC VR, it worked a lot better, but I hate the cable. Like, I really can't enjoy VR with the cable. Yeah, it's distracting, That's why I got the and you Quest feel like you really yanked it and not And now over I it. have, like, yeah. best of both worlds. I can, like, use all the PC VR apps and yet be completely wireless room scale with my Quest. That's, That's awesome. Really you know what? We need, we need and I, to and You know what? I don't it know sounds kind of nobody advanced. talks about that. That's a really awesome I don't know. Feature. I don't, is there any way you can write up like a how-to thing and maybe give it to us and we can put it up on our, on our Discord channel? Because it sounds kind of complicated, but it'd be nice to be able to give these tips out. It's something I'd love to try. It sounds awesome. That's yeah, a great sure, tip. Yeah, no problem. Like, uh, cool. the, ah, okay, I see your Discord is like right on the stage. So Yeah, it's right, yeah. right over here. You know, it's right over here. And also, if you go to our event yeah. channel, we have a joint like Discord button. Google it. It's here. called AMD Relive, like R-E-L-I-V-E. -E. Relive, okay. and I, I, I think that a lot of people don't know it because AMD is like they think of it as a feature like for enterprise VR, like companies that yeah. want to do something, and their target are not so much uh, uh, you know like gamers or regular people, but it That's still awesome. it works with virtually any AMD graphics card. With the, we install the new graphics driver, the Radon, uh, how do they call it, Adrenal driver, and it's like yeah. right there, and it's amazing. It like it has. Virtually no latency, like I don't feel any difference if I connect it with a cable or if I use it wirelessly. But wirelessly is just so much better and you have so Yeah, I would think it would be. That's fantastic. Like I still I like I, when I play like Beat Saber or any other games, I, I still play them on the quest because you know it's they're there. But you have so much more uh, variety on like Steam VR and stuff if you can like use yeah. PC. And yeah, so I wanted to share that because people don't have great to know information. That it's really good. That. It's really good. That is awesome. I love that. That is. Yeah, I'm gonna read up on. It. That's really cool. Um, all right. So listen, uh, if I didn't take any of your questions, we're a little over on time. Don't feel bad because usually we end our events by going to Raven Hall Flight Academy. Today is no different, and we're gonna end up by pressing this big red button. This is new. This is something that we're doing. Uh, and when I press this button, what's gonna happen is, um, you know, the Talent ship's going to fly down the street. It's going to fly up over those trees, and it's going to come down in the back right there, and it's going to take us all to the Radon Flight Academy so we can lead in style, right? We'll teach you how to fly in that way. All right, I'm going to press the button now. You guys watch what happens. Look out that way. Raven Hall Talent Aircraft en route to your position. All right, there it goes. All right, everybody, let's uh, head on out there and uh, and meet it uh, to carry us off to the Radon Flight Academy. Let's get some music for do our moves to go out. And if you learned anything today, please share it with everybody you come in contact with. So if you know, somebody's like stuck on the ground and they're like, hey, I'm on the quest, help me out. Tell them to press down that left thumbstick and help them out. That'll work, it'll work out great. All right, here it is, coming down. Awesome. Talon Aircraft is now boarding outside for transport to the Raven Hall Flight Academy. Please exit the building and step into the blue light. Thank you. All right, everybody, thanks for coming. You've been a great audience. Hopefully, I'll see you at the academy if you have any questions or comments or want to learn how to fly. Check you later, and see you next time.